All right. Um, session Chair, Mr. Razdan, uh, my co-speakers, Mr. Wedge, all the distinguished speakers, other speakers mm. and guests who are out here, wish you a very, very warm welcome. Um, look, let me take you to, to perhaps a date slightly in the future, not that much out. We are in 2019, just a year from now, and I'll take you through a hypothetical discussion uh, between man and machine, which will show how productivity of the future could, could perhaps work. Yep, so, um, so computer, could you help me build a forecast for, uh, for my wealth for the coming week? Please set the target production to 370 barrels per day. Actually, I think I'm missing voice out here, if you would give me one second. May I please request the, the audio to be put on? I'm sorry, we had tested this five minutes before the session started, but um, looks like we're still having problem with audio. Back to it, okay, look, we'll, we'll come back. Yep, so essentially what the session was was a session between a man and a machine talking about how production optimization for a well in the future could work. You would literally be, the way you would talk to Siri or Alexa, you would be having a session, a discussion with the computer optimizing your well as you went along. Um, and these are very, very real technologies at the background a lot of the information on optimization on the capability is available, and you will see the product being launched uh, later this year and out in the market with, uh, with significant capability coming out in the future. So it was very, um, and we tested it previously, but um, it's, um, it's not coming about now. Look, let me take you through, through why this is important and why is it that we are, why is it that we are here talking about IOT and why is IOT different and why do we think it will touch each one of us that is sitting out here in the very, very near future. If you go out to, to Europe and you have a chance to go to Munich, you will go visit the BMW Museum and the headquarters out there. You will see cars that have been built over nearly 100 years, beautiful pieces of engineering, everything working amazingly. You could take a car from 50 years ago, 70 years ago, still go down the highway. Yeah, it's a company that is making a lot of money. It is doing very well if you look at it today. Yet, if you are the CEO of BMW, you're having sleepless nights. Because everything that you have done over the last 100 years may not take you even to the next 10 or 20 years. And the reason for that is, You've got Google, which is coming up with cars that don't need drivers, yeah, with cars that will be done very, very differently. You've got Uber coming up with, you don't need cars at all. Yeah, you just share everything. Um, and then you've got Tesla, which is saying the combustion engine is no longer needed. Yeah, yeah and this is how data is going to change because data has been and IoT has been at the center of this journey. Yeah, take a look at most of us who came out here, used, sat in our cars, put on Google Maps. Google Maps is IoT. It's got a device and it's got data which is working in the back end, coming and giving you an optimization, which in this particular case is a journey optimization. The applications in the industrial side are much, much bigger, and they all relate to a digital transformation on the energy front, on the industrial front, on the oil and gas front. And the pie is much bigger than it is in our personal worlds um, to a scale which is 10 to 20x, according to the experts. Yeah, we have assets in tens of billions in the world, which are many of which are unconnected in the industrial world. People, services transformation alone can provide 20 to 30 billion dollars worth of uh, productivity and uh, related improvements. Process improvements. Then you think about the ecosystem. By the time you try to bring this experience that has happened in our personal worlds into the industrial world, we can all see what the possibilities of the future can be. And specifically to the oil and gas industry, 
the entire experience from molecules to megawatts, whether you're talking about upstream pipelines or whether you're talking about downstreams, the IoT world will touch all of these spaces in a very, very real way in the next two to three years. Yeah? The presentations that you will see in the future will not be something and examples from other industries, but more and more examples from our industry that are very real, very happening um, right now. I'll give you one example that is, that is GE and, and Baker Hughes GE's example, which talks about some examples that are specific to the oil and gas industry. I won't bore you with the details. I know there are many out here who are, who are not from the oil and gas industry. But the, the, the wave of the future will be an app-based world in the oil and gas industry, where you start to think about products like Say, take, you've got assets of a variety of different nature. Yeah, asset optimization, asset management, all as an app-based applications. Very easy to use, very simple, straightforward, that start to do, give you machine health, machine monitoring, how do you optimize those machines, how do you run your plant at an optimum way, all of that in a continuous basis in a very, very real time. We've got products that are around corrosion, around process management, around production optimization, which is IntelliStream, Reservoir, which is Joule Suite, and then finally a whole product around ServiceMax, which is optimizing a service person when he, he or she goes out in the field to, to do things. And all of these are not applications in the traditional IT sense where you are looking, which is what the world of SAP and Oracle and PeopleSoft is. These are applications where machines and humans come together to deliver solutions that are very, very real. Yep. Or, so look, instead of talking about those, let me talk about what has that experience been. And five things that you, that I can talk about has been part of GE's transformation journey that I would encourage each one of you out here, whether you're working for, um, uh, for whichever company on the coal side or the oil and gas side to think about. First is the power of data analytics. Start to think about data analytics in a very, very big way. Yes, yeah, start to put together teams that, that understand data analytics. Uh, start to put together your way of collecting information. Yeah, collecting information in terms of which starts to, because of the amount of data that is involved in our industries, you will have to start thinking about data compression, ingestion, uh, abstraction. How do you start to look at data in a very, very real way from a data analytics point of view? Next is the edge to cloud computing. The, the personal world, a lot of the information analytics, uh, the processing can happen in the cloud. But in the, in the industrial world, you can't do all of it at the cloud. Whether it's a production platform or a well or a refinery, a lot of the analysis will be done at the edge itself. Yes, yeah, so how do you manage the edge to cloud computing will be a very important part of, of this. Third is the digital twin which is almost every important process that you have. Today, most airline companies are starting to run digital twins of individual airplanes. Yeah, so you don't go and maintain all airplanes on the same pattern. They go and maintain each airplane based on the exact performance that the digital twin of that particular airplane indicates that this particular airplane will go through. So this is not a simulation model. This is a replica of that particular, so in the human world, it would be replica of me, Ashish Bhandari, in the virtual world. It will record how much did I eat, what was my history, how much did I run, what were my patterns, to come back and say, this is when you will get sick. When you get sick, most probably this is how you will get sick. And this is what you will need as remedial action to do your best. So start thinking about digital twins for your primary assets, your primary processes, etc. Finally, and um, cloud. Yeah, cloud is the future. Most of your data will move to the cloud sooner or later in the industrial world. And for Indian companies especially, um, starting to think about clouds, very, very important. And finally, the ecosystem, which is um, not just your information, you're starting to collect and work with information of everybody in your ecosystem, your partners, your um, uh, your vendors, your customers, all of it. How do you handle that information? How do you share it? How do you leverage the power of the ecosystem? So these would be our big five 
learnings from, uh, from the digital transformation that GE is going through right now. Look, one example which comes from Aramco, which, uh, which recently took a big step in this direction, and I'll say Aramco came to with four ob objectives on their digital transformation. They said they will save $4 billion annually from digital productivity. Two, they will put together a cloud which is unique to Aramco. So they will put up their own private cloud uh, for managing all of their data, which will be specific to Aramco and then hence to the government of Saudi as well. They put together a digital transformation office, which brought together, which reported straight to the CEO, which brings together all the process, not all the required, but uh, process expertise, uh, digital capability, analytics, engineers, so all functions coming together under one office specifically for digital transformation. And then finally started a big curriculum um, along with universities specifically connecting oil and gas and digital. Yeah, so that was part of Aramco's um, digital transformation. The, when I look at some of our customers, yeah, the biggest ones, um, the challenge that I see is in India, while we have a lot of capability, some of our, our uh, simple things like um, sharing information, putting together standard, standards that, are, that will help the industry, we could do better. In the sense that today, we don't have a, a policy for sharing data on the cloud in India. Yeah, we do not have a specific cloud um, that is India specific. Even simple things like data security, what data can be transmitted, not transmitted, is unclear. Many of our plants, our refineries, our, our platforms have got significant challenges in terms of even sharing basic amount of information. So there's a quite a bit that can be done, and our request would be, um, both as an Indian and as somebody that is a service provider, to, to take big, big, big steps in this direction. And, and the reason for this is, Look, you see a lot of articles coming around that, that automation um, data will take away jobs. I would say for India, it is the opposite. It is a country where software talent is abundantly available. Um, the size of the energy industry is huge. And productivity will ultimately result in lower emissions, lower costs, um, uh, better returns to the industry. And so the, it, this is actually a massive opportunity for the Indian for the Indian industry to be able to take the size of the pie that we have, which runs into, we've got uh, more than 100,000 plus people in the upstream oil and gas industry alone. By the time you take into account fertilizers, petrochemicals, this is the oil and the energy industry, what we call as the, the pseudo oil and gas industry, is one of the largest employers in, in the country. Um, we have got uh, 100 plus million uh, metric tons of annual refining capacity. So the capability that we have, and then if you add the software industry that we have, if you add one plus one, the ability to do a lot more is significant, and that is the opportunity in front of the, um, the oil and gas industry of India. As my final comment, I would say I see a lot of young faces out here, a lot of people who are just starting their careers, their journeys in the um, in this industry. I'll go back to maybe uh, my dad worked for sales, so, um, so I grew up in small towns in, in India, and he was a mechanical engineer, uh, which means he would be called at all times, late at night, because of problems that would happen at, at the plant. Um, that doesn't happen today. Yeah, and um, the experience, the pay scale, et cetera, of what happened 30, 40 years ago is not what's relevant today. Uh, my first job out of uh, engineering was a field engineer role with, with Schlumberger. And again, what that role typified in that industry in that time is not what will happen today. Yeah, if you want to be successful and, and be at the top of your industry as you look at the next five to ten years, you have to be able to take the knowledge that you have learned as a petroleum engineer, mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, to be able to connect it to the ability to solve problems. Yeah, your ability to connect it to software, to understand data analytics, and, and start thinking about the app world. Yeah, and if you're able to connect the two, then there is no limit to what your future can be. Okay, so thank you very, very much to everybody that's out here. Wish you a good day. 
That's okay, sir. It's um, just trying that. <laughs> Try that once more. Okay. I will try that. Let me know what the target production you plan to set. Okay. Uh, please set the production to 370 barrels per day. Target set. Thank you, computer. With this production target, what does my forecast look like? This is how the production looks like. The production looks promising for the next four days, and then I see challenge on day five onwards. Hmm, so that is not good, clearly. I wasn't expecting such a, um, a ramp down on, on production. Um, can you tell me why this is happening? Day four, there is a likely lift failure based on the asset analysis. If this happens, this would need an unscheduled workover. There are some additional untimed events expected in the latter part of the week. If you want, I can run an optimized production scenario for you for the targeted production. Computer, this really cannot work. Um, uh, the production is much below our projection. So please do run an optimized production and, and tell me what does that indicate. I need to optimize the production for the current pump and watch out for signals of the lift failure. Based on the assessment, I recommend a short planned workover on day four and then optimizing the lift sizing at workload identified. Look, this is much better than, um, than what it could have been. Can you tell me what is the cost of, um, of doing this? This would cost an additional $10,000 for the workover. Okay, uh, $10,000 to get back to targeted production. The, uh, the return looks like is in a day itself. Um, this makes a lot of sense to me. Would you please lock in this, um, this enhanced production curve with this uh, short planned workover on the fourth day and, and put, the, uh, put this workover, planned workover in our maintenance cycle, please. Thank you. Okay, so this was the, the beginning which you could not see, so thank you very much.